We're going to continue on looking and studying the person and the life of the Holy Spirit here in our, in our lives. And uh, the whole purpose for this is so that we get familiar with him and what he wants to do. Amen. I mean, it's so important to know the Godhead that's actually doing all the work in the earth today. I mean, we thank God we pray to the Father in the name of Jesus, and thank God that they, uh, and we have relationships and everything, but thank God for the Spirit of God that lives and dwells on the inside of us, that we can look to the inside. We can look to Him. Amen? And if you'll look to Him and you'll understand why He's here, because He's here, hallelujah, to continue to in, enlighten you, continue to strengthen you, but also to continue to show you Jesus and what all you have in Christ. He's our teacher. He's, our, he's the truth. He's our comforter. He's our guide. Amen? I'm so glad. The Bible says we have an unction from the Holy One and we know all things. And we have an anointing that abides within us. Hallelujah. Because of the Holy Spirit. So that we need not that any man teach us because of that same anointing that abides within us will teach us all things. We'll know the truth. Amen? Isn't it wonderful that we don't have to argue anymore? That's how you know if somebody doesn't know what they're talking about, they're going to argue. Now, if somebody gives you facts or somebody just gives you what it says, hey, it's what I believe, they're, they're convinced of what they believe. It. There's no, you know, hey, then you have a choice to believe it or not to believe it. See, with arguments, that's why they've got to put a shadow of doubt on the inside of you. That's why, you know, when people aren't up on uh, things, you know, they're down on them. And, and, you know, there's one thing I found out that uh, you, you'll never be blessed with something you don't believe. Let it sink in. You will never be blessed with something you don't believe. If you don't think something's going to benefit you, you won't even try it. Amen? And, uh, and that's the same thing that we've seen throughout the ages. And it's been something that's been done my entire lifetime. Uh, you know, because I grew up in a denominational church, loved it, got born again in that church. I thank God for that. It was wonderful. The same spirit that I got born again in that church is the same spirit that filled me hallelujah, in, an, in another place. I wasn't in church where I got filled, but it's where another place where I got filled with the Holy Spirit, just somebody sharing. And so it was wonderful and, and joyful, but it was the exact same spirit. There's only one Holy Spirit, not two. He's not twins. Amen. And, and I think but when you talk about the Holy Spirit, you talk about you know, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You talk about speaking in tongues. Uh, you talk about being led by the Spirit of God. It's amazing uh, all the different uh, opinions, all the different uh, responses you're going to get. Um, if you notice, I had to bring out my King James because the New Living, I do not, I, I, we're going to go there, we'll go both, and I, I don't tell you why I don't like what it says in there. I, I love the New Living. It's, it's a great, kind of helps people to understand in our day and age in language. But the, the, new, every, the new Living Translation and almost a lot of other translations always give you an out. Well, if, or maybe, or this, or they're always trying to, because they don't want to cause controversy. That's why I love the King James. Just slaps you right in the face. Just slaps you and says, no, here, what's what we're going to do? Well, I don't have, it doesn't, but you can. You may not think you have it, but you can have it. You can receive it. You can enjoy it. And yet, uh, th there seems to have been this uh, uh, kind of push against, and a push against it. Amen. And, uh, but when you find out how incredible the Holy Spirit is, when you find out how wonderful it is to pray into the tongues and to fellowship with him and how wonderful it is to, to have him there and to illuminate the word of God to you in such a way that it's so amazing and that strength that he gives you, gives you strength uh, to do things, it's, it's such a joy. Amen. It's such a joy. Like, you know, uh, and I can't, you know, explain it. And yet the reason we don't, emphasize it as much as we should is because of the controversial and everybody gets all upset about it. My seat in is going off. Somebody's texting me, so we are not going to... Hallelujah. 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 Uh, it's why I don't have an Apple Watch because I kept going d d d and I have to keep looking at it. I just can't do that. Hallelujah. People with self-control have those things. I can't do that. I have to be free and clear of everything that takes place. 
I'm just talking. We are going to open up. We are going to pray. We are going to... I'm just kind of getting waiting to see and getting everybody to come in. And that's good for you guys to be here. Amen. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. We magnify your name. We honor you. Oh, we love you. We glorify you, Lord. You alone are such a great and mighty God. Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus to die for us. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you made it back to heaven and you sent the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. You sent him. He came. Hallelujah. And he came to those that were in the upper room there. And from that moment on, he's been present in the earth ever since, even though he was here before and after. But Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That it's by your spirit, Father, that we thank you that we can rule and reign in our lives, that we can learn and grow and be strengthened because of what you have. So Father, I ask tonight as I just share from my heart as we just speak truths as we're endeavoring to know the Holy Spirit even better and better and better Father because not only do we want to understand his role on the inside of us we want to understand his role when he comes upon upon us to anoint us for service and the understanding of that anointing the understanding of that power and that grace Lord, we magnify you. We thank you for the gifts of the Spirit. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Father, we thank you for, for all of the things that we're, you've given unto us to accomplish your work in the earth so that lives can be saved, lives can be touched. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for it, Father. Lord, we magnify your name. We honor you and love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And amen. Hey, turn in your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. We are going to do here, just talk about And how many of you know that this coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday? 50 days after Easter is always Pentecost Sunday. So Pentecost Sunday is it, and I love Pentecost Sunday. And, I, you, know, you know, one of the reasons is, is because of what, that's the, the church age, even though the church started before that, 50 days before you know, or maybe a little less than that because Jesus breathed on them and told them and said, hey, receive ye the Holy Spirit in Luke's gospel. And then he said, but don't do anything until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. And told him to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit showed up there. And he did. Hallelujah. And it changed the course of their lives and changed the course of the world. Amen. He took, you know, 11 or 12, 12 guys there that, hallelujah, were didn't know what they were going to do, and he turned them into supernatural guys that, that changed the world and went and changed continents. Amen. Fantastic things that took place. Acts chapter 1, verse 1 says, The former treaties I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to, to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit not many days hence. And when he had there, they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which, is the, which the Father hath put in his own power, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. One of the biggest keys about being filled with the Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, is this, is that the number one thing about doing that is so that you'll be a witness. You'll have power to share the gospel. You'll have power to declare the truths of the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And one of the biggest problems that we have, in, especially in uh, charismatic and word of faith and, and even in Pentecostal circles today, is that everybody's seeking tongues instead of seeking him. They're seeking a manifestation instead of a person, instead of getting filled. If you'll get filled, hallelujah, everything else will come in line. 
Amen. And I'll give you just a little bit of an example. Last week, you guys got me off on stories. I'm not going to get on stories this week. I'm going to make sure I stay focused, okay? But I am going to give you this story, okay? Uh, I, I, <laughs> I am, one. Hallelujah. I, I, I say that, but then I, I don't know what's going to happen. But anyways, I had a lady in my church back in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wonderfully, she's still there today. And she's, she's, she's not old. She's just older now. Lots older. And, uh, and uh, you know, we've been here 30 years, and I was there 13 or 12 and a half years before that. So, uh, you know, she's 42 years older. Anyways, uh, she was a paralegal secretary to a, to a biggest law firm there in town. And uh, just real sweet. But she was very intelligent, and, very, she was, and she came from England. And so she came to our church and, uh, you know, loved everything. And, of course, we'd talk about being filled. We'd have Holy Ghost services. And everything. And she just told me, she said, Pastor, I just, I just don't know about all this. I just don't know about this. And I just told her, I said, listen, don't worry about anything. You just keep coming. You just keep coming, keep giving your heart to God. Just love God. You just need to get filled. She said, well, I do. Want. I said, just let God fill you. Then everything else will come together. Whether you, you know, you'll speak in tongues or you'll receive, everything will be great. Just give God. Let it just happen. And after about four years of coming every service, hallelujah, all of a sudden we got past her mind. And one Sunday night, the Holy Ghost fell, and all of a sudden I heard this beautiful voice just worshiping God in a heavenly language. And I turned around, and I knew who it was, and she's just crying, and she's like, this is awesome. She said, I could have had this four years ago if I'd known I was supposed to do. I said, well, you just didn't know what you're supposed to do yet, but you got full, and that's all you needed to do. I just kept loving on her. I said, it's all good. Her, you know, little side stories. Her mom came over from England, and I preached. And I said, well, how did your mom like the message? She goes, she goes Pastor, she just shook her head. She said, he slaughtered the king's English. I said, I know. I speak American, not English. But she said, but she did sense and feel the anointing, and she loved it. But she said, she said you slaughtered the king's English. I said, I did. Amen. <laughs> Did you notice that in Acts chapter 1 here, it said here that we're to wait for the promise. Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit is the promise? It's the promise that Jesus said, I'm going to go away, but another comforter is going to come. Someone just like me who's going to come. We're going to be right with another comforter is going to come. Amen. And it's going to empower you to be witnesses. It's going to empower to send you out. Amen. You know, it's funny because if you look at this, the disciples, you know, they were hoarding everything in. It wasn't until, uh, you know, Acts chapter uh, 7, you know, when all, all of the stuff happened with Philip and everything in Acts chapter 8 when they had to be dispersed because they were just, the gospel was only in Jerusalem. He told them here, you're going to do it in Jerusalem and, and Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth, but they hadn't left Jerusalem at all until persecution came. Until they had to be scattered. And that's when they left and the gospel went out. And it's when, you know, Philip went down to the city of Samaria. They finally went into Samaria. They were, they weren't even going to go into Judea. Amen. If you, my Bible, I just have to flip the page. You can flip the page. We're going to go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And we're going to read verses 1 through 4, you know. And we're going to just share about the, the things that took place. My, my heart is, 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 is to let the Spirit of God stir on the inside of it and get you hungry. Hungry for the things of God because we've, we've allowed the church to become intellectual. We're trying to defeat the enemy with a mental ascent or with our mind and how we're doing. We're trying to get natural things to, uh, uh, you know, make things in the spiritual right. And that's not the key. Things that are natural were made out of things that didn't appear. The spiritual was here before the natural. God was here before the earth. Amen. God is the spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit. God, and God spoke it and the spirit created it. Amen. And so we understand some things is that we need to realize is that we are a supernatural being. That doesn't put us up above anybody else. It enables us to be able to help everybody else who may not understand. And we're not here to argue. For those of you that came a little later, I, I made a statement. I said, aren't you glad we don't have to ever argue anymore? Because one of the biggest problems, you know, if somebody's arguing about something, they don't know about it. And because they're trying to get doubt on the inside of you to figure out, okay, what do we do? We're not. Now, I know we have Christian apologetics and everything to talk and to really, so people, they can get them like, oh, you know, my biggest thing is they can get you to think about it and get in it and you don't get spiritually born again or you just get mentally, you're going to get mentally talked out of it. 
You got to get born again. And when you get born again, it changes your life. You don't care if everybody in the world disagrees with you. You just smile. It's too late for me. What do you mean it's too, it's too late? It works. It's, it's too late. It's too late. I'm having fun. You know? You know? You know? These people say, well, I don't think he has enough sense to doubt. I don't think he has enough sense to be afraid. Or I don't think he has enough sense, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to take this, you know, seriously and some things. It's like, no, I have, I have God's sense. I know what the word of God says. I don't have to be afraid. Amen? And I believe this because it's what God's word says. Everybody wants to get analytical about it. They want to try to take it away. But we need to understand that we are spirit beings. We possess a soul. Amen. That's our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we are live in a body. Amen. So the man on the inside who got born again, and the man on the inside of you, which is your spirit man, is the one that's communicating with, your, with the Holy Spirit. Amen. His spirit's bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's what the Bible says. That the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are born again and nobody can take that away from us. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we got filled. We got rivers coming out. Thank God we had a well. Thank God we've got the fruit of the spirit, which is a well of water. We can draw up love. We can draw up peace. We can draw up joy. Nobody can steal our love. Nobody can steal our peace. Nobody can steal our joy. Hallelujah. Thank God we've got long suffering on the inside of us if we need to put up with people for as long as we can. Amen. Hallelujah. We've got gentleness. We've got goodness. We've got meekness. You know, the Bible says that a man that has counsel, you know, counsel is found in the heart of man, and a man of understanding will draw it out of him. He's going to draw it out of him, you know. And then you've got people that, that's what they want to just use that and say, well, that's what the Holy Spirit's all about. He's all about the fruit of the Spirit. He is all about the fruit of the Spirit, but he's also all about the gifts of the Spirit, amen? He's also all about placing you in the body of Christ where your office is or where your function is. There's no unused members in the body of Christ because... Paul talked about he likened us unto the body of Christ. And so, I mean, if you've got a member in your body that says, I don't want to be here. I mean, if your kneecap says, I don't want to be connected here. I want to be the shoulder. And it decides to dislocate and go up here. You're not going to walk. Amen? What happens if your little toe decides it doesn't want to be the little toe anymore? And just, you know, if you've ever hit it, you understand. It's got a loud voice. But it's the body of Christ functioning together. It's the spirit of God that does. It's the spirit within us and it's the spirit upon us that takes hold. Amen? But we're just going to go through it and we're going to talk about speaking in tongues tonight a little bit. Is you guys okay? We're going to do it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it. Because see, I've been on the other side of the spectrum. I was raised in a church that said speaking in tongues is of the devil. Don't get around any Pentecostal person. Don't get around anybody that believes anything different than you are because you'll catch something and you'll get to be bad. And I did get around different people, and I did catch it. The problem was, as I began to read my Bible, they gave me a Bible, so I started to read it. They should have never given me that Bible. They did. I didn't, you know, they gave me a Bible, and I said, okay. You know, my grandmother gave me my first Bible when I was six years old. They gave me my second Bible, you know. So I, I began to read and to look at this thing because I just enjoyed reading it. Amen. Look at here in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. <clears throat> he says this. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen? Hallelujah. When you understand some things that take place and, and what had transpired here, uh, you, and if you keep reading, this is where most people get, and they say, yeah, that was a supernatural thing to start the church. They all were speaking in, in, in these languages. That's why God gave them the language to everybody that was there. But and I actually don't really believe that at all. I'm going to share with you a little bit of things here, but let's keep reading. Verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And when these, this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they are, were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? 
How hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites and dwellers of Mesopotamia and Judea and Cappadocia in Pontus and Asia and Phygeria and Pamphylia in Egypt and parts of Libya and about Cyrene and the strangers of Rome and Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. And then verse 12 is the, the one that is probably, it says, and they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another, what meaneth this? And everybody in the world today is saying, what means this? What good is it? What is it? What is it endeavoring to do? You know, let me give you three things that took place on the day of Pentecost. You know, so if you're taking notes, you can write things down, but it doesn't matter. Three things that took place right here is that on the day of Pentecost, the first great work that God did was to fill believers with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank God they got full and the Spirit of God came down. The second great work was to liberate their human spirits so that they could pray in tongues and worship God in the Spirit. The third great work that God did was that it occurred when the believers spoke in other tongues and God supernaturally translated those tongues into the ears of the listeners so that each member of the audience heard them speak in his or her own language. There's great arguments that take place, and, and I know people that, that disagree, and I'm like, hey, I'm not going to fight or fuss with you, but I know that when the Spirit of God was poured out, and I believe this with all of my heart because I know that's what happens in my life because as being a pastor and also understanding, we're going to talk about some things too about the difference between tongues and interpretation in church and then just use praying in tongues in your own prayer, prayer life, but understand is that when somebody is praying in the tongues that I hear them and I, and I know I'm supposed to interpret what they're saying is because I hear what they're saying in English. You hear it in their heavenly prayer language. <laughs> but if I don't understand what they're doing, then I ain't supposed to say anything. <laughs> and I do hear them in their prayer language, but I know what they're saying because I'm hearing it in my understanding in my language. On this day, when they all was praying, and God, there was their heavenly language praying. They were praying, but everybody heard them in their own language. But that doesn't mean that there can't be times somebody's praying in other tongues, and they can actually pray another language to benefit somebody that's here. Amen? We have the hardest time of, of, of letting God be God in our lives and everything of what transpires, what takes place. The reason I share that is because, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit is desiring to supernaturally touch us, to use us so that we know things supernaturally, so that we're blessed by it, so that we know that God is real. He wants to take the Word of God and make it real to us. He wants to show us things. Amen? And He's the promise. He's the promise of the Holy Spirit, and He's poured out on all of us. He's poured out for each and every one of us. Amen? To receive. To receive it. Glory to God. I mean, you know, John 14, 17 says that he told his disciples, the world can't receive the Holy Spirit. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, we're, we're out here preaching to the world. They can get born again. I thought they, they could do this. I thought, time out, time out. Why would Jesus say, you go in all the world, preach the gospel, tell whoever believes in his baptism is going to be saved. You preach about Jesus, you're going to say, they're going to get born of the Spirit. They can receive the Holy Spirit. How, they, if they don't do that, they're not going to get born again. Jesus turns to the disciples and says, now you got to wait and do, I'm going to send you another company whom the world cannot receive. Okay. What did the disciples say? What did, what did Philip say to him? And he said, okay, he said, time out. How is it that we can receive but the world can't receive? And Jesus said, me and my father, we're going to come, we're going to make a home with you. Yeah. Don't you know God wants to make his home with everybody? Amen. But he was telling about another comforter that's coming. That's why he told him, you receive. Now wait for the Holy Spirit to come so that you can be endued with power. He's talking about a, a, a total thing and saying here, because he, getting them to it, the world wants to receive it. And we get to receive it. Amen? But the world wasn't looking for him. Thank God they were looking for him. Amen? We, we, we see some things here that when we ask ourselves about, okay, what makes it so vitally important about the Holy Spirit, because he's the Godhead that's working in the world today. Do we pray to him? No. Do we talk to him? Yes. 
Do we worship him? We can because the, the disciples worship Jesus, so it's okay. Y'all okay? Y'all doing good? You're all doing good, okay? I know we're teaching, we're sharing, and we're going to have some Holy Ghost times, but we got to get you comfortable. <laughs> Amen? It's amazing how many people get uncomfortable when the Spirit of God starts moving and somebody starts doing something and, and know the difference between the Holy Spirit moving and when somebody's doing something by the flesh. Amen? Hallelujah. And knowing the difference. Knowing the difference. Knowing in, in this, you know. See, the thing about it is, is that when we see what, what transpired, what took place, it, 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 well, in fact, go over to Acts chapter 10. Go over to Acts chapter 10. Let's just look at something here real quick. I was going to jump over, and, but I don't want to jump. I don't want to preach this, Holy Ghost. I want to teach this. I don't want to get too excited here. Then they'll all just enjoy watching me. <clears throat> Amen. And why this is so important to me is because, like I said, I spent the first 18 years of my life going to church, loving Jesus, trying my best to be the best Christian I could ever be. I was born again at nine. So for nine years, nine years, man, I was, but yet I was failing miserably, but I was doing better than everybody else, but I was still failing miserably according to, I just didn't have power. I didn't have the relationship that I wanted to have. And it just seemed like, man, God, there's got to be more. And I was just hungry, hungry. I said, God, there's got to be more than this. And he kept directing my steps. He kept directing me, and he got me to a place where there is more. Yes. And when I got around folks who had more, who were loving God, who had, I said, you know, and I said, man, I want what you have. They said, well, you need to be filled with the Spirit. You need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. I said, what the heck is that? I said, I, you know, I said well, I'm born again. I knew I was saved. I knew I'd make heaven, but... And I couldn't get past my head. Couldn't get past my head. Because I was taught, if you don't understand it, then it must not be God. See, because I'm just as smart as God. <laughs> yeah, you should laugh about that. That's dumb. But that's what they said. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. There's a whole bunch of things I don't understand. Amen? I don't understand how a microwave works. Don't try to tell me. I had a guy come up and try to explain everything. I don't care. When the microwaves first came out, thank God for them. I just put that sucker in there, press one minute, and it's good. I don't care how it works. It heats the food up. That's what we wanted. You know, I don't, I don't want to know how it works. I don't care. I just want to benefit from it. All right? Look here in Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Acts chapter 10 says, while yet... While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And then they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then Peter answered, can any of us or any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? Amen. All of a sudden, here you got people that got born again, filled with the Holy Ghost instantaneously. Yes. In Acts chapter 19, you got people that were, he, they came and met Paul. And Paul said, have you, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Well, we didn't even heard if there is any Holy Spirit. Amen. He said, under what baptism were you baptized? They said, under John's baptism. John baptized under repentance. He preached Christ. They got born again. They got filled with the Holy Spirit. And they, not only did they speak in tongues, but the Bible says they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Spoke by inspiration, by the Spirit of God. We need to see that. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, and when we see it, God begins to do things. Amen. God always teaches us and always gives the Holy Spirit to teach us to come in line with the things of God, how, of what God has for us. And the wonderful thing about the Holy Spirit, he'll make everything clearer. He'll open up the word of God to you. Amen. He really will. You know. Hallelujah. Now I want to give you four types. Of speaking in, in other tongues. I want to give you the four things in the, what the Word of God teaches us so that you'll be able to rightly divide it. Somebody asked me a question one time. They said, well, what, is it ever, what has it done for you? Well, it's done everything for me, getting filled with the Holy Spirit. I got, you know, uh, and speaking in other tongues has been the greatest benefit in my life other than getting born again. Because it's the next step. But it got me off a roller coaster. It got me off of going up and down, up and down, having the devil kick me from everything, always being able to defeat me, till I got on a rocket ship, and he hasn't been able to hang on ever since. 
And I mean that literally. You know, he's tried to throw meteorites at me. He's tried to knock me off course. He's tried to do all these things, but I keep going. Amen. Because of the spirit of God within me. Because of what God's, God says and what God's done. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and so let me just share these things. And all this gives you an understanding of it because Paul said, I wish that everybody could, would speak in tongues. I wish that everybody would feel God's desire is that. Amen. So the one first thing is this, is that, you know, and this is when it talks over here, um, you know, we see here in Acts chapter 2, if you want to go back there or if you want to go over to... 1 Corinthians 14. Let's just do Acts chapter 2. That's the one I talked about there. When they all heard them in their own name. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 14 that tongues is a sign to the unbeliever. And yet the Bible also says in 1 Corinthians 14, which we're going to get into when we get into this. A wonderful thing about this, I'm going to teach this on Wednesday night all the way through till, till we go to the men's retreat at the end of June. Hallelujah, the 30th, we won't, you know, because I'm, I'm expecting God to do some supernatural things at that retreat. So if you want to come, come. If you don't, I don't care. Five, we're going to have a blast. Amen. I've got two people coming that are going to be ministering there that are anointed to, to, to minister by the Spirit of God, and we're going to have fun. And if it's just us three, we're going to have fun. Some said, well, you don't want us to come? I want you to come. You know, you, you got to sign up. You got to pay. You got to do all that stuff. And, uh, but I want you to come. You know, and there's only spots for, well, since us three are coming, there's only 21 spots. Or no, you said they added another chair, so there's 22 spots. Another bed. They kicked the, yeah, another bed. So there's 22 spots, okay? Anyways, first one is tongues is a sign for the unbeliever. That's what these guys heard. They heard them speak in their own languages. They heard them speak here in, in Acts chapter 2, 5 through 11, which we just read. They heard that it was, it was a sign that what, what was going on. Same thing as in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know, it says that uh, uh, it's going to convict them of knowing something on the inside of them that, hey, there's something supernatural going on. Amen? Something very supernatural that's, that's happening, that's taking place. Amen? We, we see some things here uh, that God's desire is to have. And then, you know, tongues is for our personal prayer life, number one. When you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it's all about that. It's just it's the language that God gives to you. It, it, that you're, you're honoring him, you're worshiping him. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians there, you know, 14 verses 15, 14 and 15, when it talks about that I'll, I'll sing in the spirit, I'll pray in the spirit, I will, you know, I will you know, speak with my understanding, but I'll also spend, pray with my, in the spirit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do both things. God's saying, I have an opportunity to have fellowship with you in an incredible intimate way. And he wants to. Hallelujah. And thank God, I thank God, my individual, my own prayer life, to pray in other tongues, hallelujah, and allow God to lead and direct my life. Man, what a refreshing, what a blessing. Amen. I mean, I, I believe in Jude 20. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. I believe that. Hallelujah. And I honor God by doing this thing. It just brings an edification, an exhortation, and a comfort, and a blessing, and a building up that just strengthens. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It just does something right on the inside of you that changes everything around. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, also, you know, in the, in the next one to talk about is tongues for interpretation, which is what the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, that he began to share and talk about, you know, Paul writing to the church at Corinth because things were going crazy. They had all kinds of things happening, and he, he was trying to bring order. He wasn't trying to stamp it out, but he was trying to bring order. That's why people, t- people take what he said there. I'd rather say five words in English than a thousand words in other tongues because he's trying to edify the church. Amen? But he's saying this, it, tongues and interpretations equals prophecy, which is inspired utterance. That's why all in the scriptures it says that tongues is not, it's not going to benefit anybody if you just do that. But it's going to benefit them if you, if you interpret that because tongues interpretation equal to prophecy. But that's a gift. That's a spiritual gift that God is not everybody's going to do that publicly. Nor do you really... You know, you, you know, if you desire, praise God, ask the Lord. But the key is, is that the biggest key for, for getting filled with the Holy Spirit is for you personally strengthening you, your prayer life with God, you being able to, to, to confound the enemy because he, he won't be able to understand it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because in the Spirit, you're speaking mysteries. Hallelujah. 
And it's you and God, you and God being blessed. And your mind in the beginning goes crazy. Let me just tell you, if you, if you like to think and study and, and you have this analytical mind like I do, you want to figure everything out, it'll just drive you crazy. It's awesome. <laughs> it, it will. It'll mess you up. Every time you get done praying in a, an hour in tongues, the devil will be instantaneously, the devil and your spirit will be saying, well, that was dumb and that was useless and we wasted all that time. But if you walk by faith and know the word of God, you go, oh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. You're just nervous. You're nervous because I just charged up the battery and I'm about to take off. I'm about to go do, and I'm about to come out of here and go lead people to Jesus. I'm about to go I'm out of here, lay hands on the sick and see them recover. I'm about to go out and give somebody an encourager. I'm about to go out here and bless somebody. You're nervous. <laughs> I know you don't ever talk like that, but I do. I like to get up and say, Mr. Devil, I'm awake. What, what, what are we going to let's, let's, let's Come on, let's take this thing here. Amen. Hallelujah. Why is that? Because the Word of God says that. Because I see that in the book of Acts. When they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, it changed Peter from being this mamby pamby guy, even though he was the big guy going to beat everybody else up. But he, he just, he was defeated. Jesus appears to him three times. But even after that, he says, I'm still going to go back to fishing business. I'm just going to do the fishing business. And he's there hiding out. These guys are hiding out in a room, afraid of, of, of all the soldiers and afraid of all the, the Jewish guys. They're hiding out. Jesus appeared to 500 people, and only 120 showed up at the, the, in the upper room, showed up for the day of Pentecost. Only one quarter. Remember what Jesus said about the parable of the, the sower sows the seed? Only one quarter, only 25%. Only 25% showed up there. He said, if you don't understand, he said, you got to understand, you're going to preach to four people, but only one's going to get it. You're going to preach to 100, but only 25 are going to get it. And even out of that 25, some are only going to get 30% of it. Some are going to get 60%. And then some, glory to God, are going to get 100. You know, if I'd have figured that out earlier, I'd have thought, gosh, this is a tough job being a pastor. You got to preach. You got to figure the odds here. Amen. Well, I was talking to somebody today, and they had, they had not, well, they had about 40 people get born again, and, and, and he got 19 of them to call and to, they came for a guy to call and to follow up after, so he was calling them up. He said, it's funny, I tried to call, a lot of them un, unlisted, unconnect, disconnected numbers, didn't do it. He said, I tried it, I left message, nobody would, he said, I finally got a hold of three people who actually had responses, and those three came back out of the 20 he got a hold of that came forward on Sunday and got born again. Only three actually came back to you know, actually to do things. I mean, they did statistics about Billy Graham and all the millions that he would preach to and all the millions of people that came forward. Only 1% stayed saved. I could, that could discourage you. <laughs> But it didn't discourage. It just kept going. You know, hey, 1% is better than zero. <laughs> Amen. You know, hallelujah. And, and I think sometimes in this understanding, but we have got to get making this lifestyle and getting this to know the spirit of God because then it changes your whole relationship with him. Amen. See, so first one, tongues is for uh, the unbeliever. Second thing, tongues is for our personal thing. Third thing, tongues is for interpretation. Hallelujah, where God wants to do things. He wants to speak supernaturally. He wants to arrest people to let them know supernatural things are taking place. And then the fourth one is that it is in from Romans chapter 8, verse 26. And I want you to turn over to there because I, I love this one. I love this one immensely because, hallelujah, it enables us that, man, no matter what, Praise God, we get to pray, we get to believe, and God answers our prayers, but especially when we, when we begin to just intercede, because it's, it's tongues for intercession. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says this. He says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Greek says, which cannot be uttered in articulate speech, which means we're going to have to pray in other tongues. We're just really praying by the Spirit, and he's enabling us to do that. And I truly believe we need a lot more of that. We need to get some births. We need to get people born. We need to be interceding. Truly get some things where you just get into that and travail in that. Now, I, you know, don't ever do that publicly, but I do do that privately. 
Amen. I want more of it too. It seems like our time gets robbed. Amen. Because he doesn't enable us, for me anyways, if I don't take some time. Hallelujah. Because, you know, God, I just dig in and say, Lord, I want to, what, what's going on? What's taking place? I want to, you know. Because you need to understand, God's not moving by our reasoning or by our need or by our feelings. God always moves rather to the call of faith, of what we believe. Remember I said in the very beginning, you won't be blessed with something you don't believe in. Amen. And, and, and then you won't get upset if somebody disagrees with what you believe in if you know it to be true. Amen. People want to discredit this and discredit that and discredit these things here, and they want to get you, and you're just like, eh. Hallelujah. Because here's something. I wrote this down. Experience is a wonderful confirmer of truth, but it is not a teacher of truth. The Holy Spirit's our teacher. Experience is a wonderful confirmer of truth, which you can say, hey, I've tasted and seen that the Lord's good, but it's not the teacher of truth the Holy Spirit is. Because have you ever heard me say this? I had people come to say, well, the, people have come to me when they're like frustrated because I, you know, I'm a very strong and I teach your faith and I believe in it. They said, Pastor, the only reason that you believe the way you believe is because it works for you. Now that sounds very spiritual. Doesn't it? Doesn't it sound good? I mean, if something's working, yeah, you're going to believe in it. I said, no, but you're wrong. That's, that's not the right statement. I said, what do you mean? I said, no. I don't, I don't preach what I preach because it works for me. I believe what I believe because it's the truth of God's word. And because it's the truth of God's word, it works. That's a big difference. Because I've had where I believe that I received and it didn't work. But did that make the word of God to none effect? Is that means this wasn't true? The Bible says, let God be true and every man be a liar. Okay? I didn't do it right. See, we get all excited. I did too. I did everything and God didn't do it. Whoops. Time out. Got to go to rule number one. God's always right. Rule number two, if you think God's wrong, always refer to rule number one. The word of, see, and that's the thing about it. And, and they, they, they looked at me. I said, no, see, that's where the problem is. You want to believe it when you see it working. I believe it whether it's working or not because I believe it because God said it. And that's why it works for me. There's a difference. Same thing with the spirit of God. Same thing that what he's saying we have to do, you know. And uh, when, when, when you see this, Amen. Go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Man, is it already? Golly. Wow. Time flies when you're having fun. I thought I was going really slow tonight. This is good. <clears throat> Y'all doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Look at verse 1. He said, follow after charity or follow after love and desire spiritual gifts but rather that you may prophesy. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesies speaks unto men to edification, exhortation, and comfort. He that speaks in an unknown tongue edifies himself, but the church but he that prophesies uh, edifies the church. I would that you all spake with tongues, but rather that you prophesied. Amen? The New Living says, if you do speak with tongues, or if you do receive this, and I, I throw the word if out. I crossed that out in my brand new Bible. I put a big X over that. And because uh, I said, that's not true. It's not if, it's you're supposed to do those things. And then he said, I would that all would speak with tongues, but rather that you prophesy. And he's not saying, oh, don't do away with that. He said, but so much more. That word rather means so much more, not and or. But rather that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaks with tongues, except that he interpret that the church may be received edifying. He's endeavoring to talk to what happens in the church. Now he says, brethren, if I come unto you speaking with tongues, what shall I profit you except I shall speak to you either by revelation or 
or by knowledge or by prophesying or by doctrine. He's not saying not to do it. He's saying, but I've got to give you revelation. There's got to be uh, something that's going on. Doctrine, knowledge, things are taking He said, even things without life giving sound, whether piped or harp, except they give a distinction in the sounds, how shall it be known what is piped or harp? For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? So likewise, you, except you utter by tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken, for you shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them without signification, okay? Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian, and he that speaketh shall be to me, I be a barbarian unto me. Even so, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else when I, thou hast blessed with the spirit, how since he that occupieth the room of the unlearned say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing and, or, that, or seeing he understands not what you're saying. For you give thanks. Thanks, or you verily give thanks well, but the other is not edified. He said, I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than all of you. He must have prayed 24 hours a day. Hallelujah. Yet in church, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. You know, it's amazing that everybody that disagrees with praying in tongues, they know that verse. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they know that verse. But... Look at the 20th verse. He says, brethren, be not children in understanding. Howbeit in malice be children, but in understanding be men. He said, okay, now you got to realize and listen to what you need to do. Because spiritual things are spiritual things. And pertaining to that, he goes on to talk about a lot of things. How is it what we need to have and what we need to take place. I mean, the 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians is phenomenal. Hallelujah. And it's so wonderful about what, what needs, needs to come in. Is that when you understand mysteries... And that's where people get messed up. Because just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's not of God. Amen. Aren't you glad God is bigger than your brain? I, I, that, that phrase, when God gave me that, oh, gosh, that set me free from me. Because I'm always trying to figure everything out. I think I can do it, all things. I think I should be able to know all, do all things. I, I just, I can figure it out. But, when he said, listen, aren't you glad I'm bigger than your brain? When it came to spiritual things, I had to yield to him. Amen. I had to yield to what he said, what he's doing. Glory to God and to fellowship. Because God's wanting us to have an intimate communication and a fellowship on a very, very deeper level. Hallelujah. And that's why we need to maintain, do that. And we need to be doing that and building ourselves up, strengthening ourselves in this, doing this so that it's our personal prayer time, our personal time with it. Because God's desire is to show us mysteries. You know? I mean, Jeremiah 33, 3. You know, all of you can probably quote that. If you can't, that's, that's God's telephone number. Call unto me, and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know not. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, and, and giving us understanding and those things there, right? And, he, and here's, here's the thing, too. Remember, there's, there's a scripture in, in, in Deuteronomy that says that the secret things belong to the Lord, but the things that he wants to reveal to you belongs to you and to your children forever. So if God doesn't see fit to reveal things to you, you just leave it alone. But the things that he he said, if you'll call unto him, he'll show you things. He'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. Amen? Aren't you glad for that? The Amplified says he'll show you hidden things that are fenced in for you, waiting for you to go unlock them so that you can have them at this time. Amen? How many of you know that the Spirit of God has things for you that you haven't entered in yet? He's got places and things for you to say and do. He's got visions and dreams for all of us. I'm thoroughly convinced we ought to be entertaining angels. I mean, I mean the more I'm studying on angels, it's amazing. Somebody said, when are you going to teach that? I don't know. I got to get it first. <sighs> I got to, you know, I read all kinds of books, look at things, read the Bible. Because I always teach you what I know. I never teach you what I think. 
See, because I don't care if you argue. You come up and disagree. I disagree with you. I say, praise God. Hallelujah. That, that, you have a right. Praise God. Is it working for you? That's all. If it's good, it's good. If you're happy with your life, I'm really happy with mine. I got you all nervous and quiet again. What's up? So will you just think you'd... No. I just know what I know. Because, see, here's the thing. Every word that I say to you, I am going to get held accountable for it. I've got a double judgment coming upon me. I'm a gift to the body of Christ as a pastor. I'm a gift. That's what the Bible says. God gave gifts unto men. He gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. I'm a gift. But I'm a gift to you to serve you. Amen. Now, thank God that you, there's a reciprocal thing that's there to, 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 in, in, in honor. But the key is I'm a gift. But in that gift... You know, James said, don't all aspire to be teachers. Don't all aspire to, because there's going to be a double condemnation. King James says there's a double damnation. Now, I'm just glad that word doesn't mean that. Hallelujah. <laughs> That'll set you free. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. But in the Old Testament, it says that the blood of everybody, th- their blood is on your hand if you don't do it right. Now, see, I know all those scriptures. I told all those scriptures. I said, God, I don't want to be responsible for nobody. Why are you calling me? I don't want to do this. I want to mouth off and not have any responsibility. <laughs> I want to be able to have my opinion. Because, see, your opinion and my opinion don't count for nothing. Amen? I mean, we look at this and we see this and go, oh, my gosh. But God's desire, you know, I mean, I'm so glad that if we'll ask the Holy Spirit, he'll give us an understanding And he'll illuminate to us of what our spirit is trying to get us to pray or what our spirit's trying to get to us. Because God's not hiding anything from us. Amen? He truly isn't. He truly isn't. I don't know why I'm turning the page because we've only got eight minutes, but that's okay. This might be good. Let me give you some things here. Let me just throw these out here and we'll just kick over a few sacred cows. You ready? How did uh, let me give her some misconceptions about it, things that I heard, things that people were told me, you know, uh, where people say, well, you're not saved unless you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues or speak in tongues. That's a lie because <laughs> you're born of the Spirit. I was born again way before I started getting baptized with the Holy Spirit. And I love God. In fact, I was, I love God more than all the Pentecostal people I knew. All the, you know, and uh, they were all the separated ones. They were all, I didn't understand why they were being separated. You know, I, I didn't, and I, I wasn't trying to put them down, but they were, they were all, they had their own little club, but I was an athlete, but I was born again and I love God and I share Jesus. I, I would preach Christ more than they ever did trying to get people saved because I knew that God, you needed to get saved. I had no idea about the power. i not, you know, once I got you know, filled with the Holy Spirit and all that. I, I was like, dude, they got the power and they didn't share it. What the heck? I mean, I even dated some of those girls. They didn't even talk to me one time about that. Amen. I probably wasn't, wouldn't have heard it then either. But the, the thing about it is, is that, no, you're saved. You're born of the Spirit. The Bible talks about that. Amen. Here's the biggest one. Tongues is not for, I didn't get that gift. I don't have that gift. No, you may not have the gift of tongues and interpretation, but everybody has a right to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in other tongues. God's desire. God wants us to do three things. He wants us to get born again. He wants us to get filled with the Holy Spirit, and he wants us to grow up spiritually. That's what he wants you to do. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, and so they get like, well, you can't. And then here's another one. You can't pray in tongues at will, which means you have to get supernaturally, has to get to work it up. No, we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, it says, what is it then? I will pray with the, my spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with my understanding. Well, can you pray anytime you want to in understanding? Well, that means you can pray in tongues anytime you want to. It's got to stir you. You know, you just you do it. Now, you can, after many years, if you're doing many years, you can just start doing it out of your own spirit because you don't hook your heart up with it. Just doing it out of rote. That's like reading. Oh, I'm going to read this again. I've read this a thousand times, but I'm going to read it again and not get anything out of it because you don't esteem it as the word of God. Yeah. Now, now, look at me so holy. I've been doing this. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to complete my 45th year. Hallelujah. 45th year of ministry at the end of this month. You know, I, I, I have been in ministry 45 years of ministry. 
That's nuts. When I think of that, golly, most people retire at 30 years or something. But I never had a job. I've never had a job. I've only had a calling. So how do you quit that? You don't. You're called. So, you know, the thing about, but, and I'm having a blast. I'm not planning on quitting either, so don't, don't, don't look at that. I'm having fun. All right? You know, and so when somebody says tongues aren't for everyone, the problem is, is that they have a misconception because a lot of my friends, you know, even pastoral friends, well, I just never received that gift. And then a lot of other people are like, well, I, I'd, get, I'd do that, but I, I want to be in control. Remember what I said? What, what, what was, the, what was the, 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 the second great thing that, that happened to these guys on that? The second great work was it liberated their human spirit so they could pray in tongues and worship God in the spirit. It actually enabled them. I mean, it changed Peter. Hallelujah. Changed him. I mean, he became supernatural strength. He became the leader. He became powerful. That even his shadow, his shadow, people got healed because of his shadow. I mean, that's pretty impressive. The power, the presence of God. Peter raising, he raised people from, you know, from the dead. I mean, the things of God. Remember, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Peter grabs him and says, come on, rise up and walk. And Peter's denying the Lord. Peter's afraid. But he gets filled with the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, we got to change, dude. He jumps up and he's not afraid of any. He's out there preaching in the streets and he preaches this great message and 3,000 people get saved. Amen. And then the fourth thing is all tongues are prayer. No, they're not. No. And to find yourself in ministry, hallelujah, glory to God. I mean, they're given, you know, uh, uh, you know, in, in that. Thank God we can use it in prayer, but it's not all that way. Hallelujah. Amen. And then what, what happens is, as we get caught up into this, is that people want to say, yeah, well, I just don't believe in that. As I said, you're never going to get blessed with anything you don't believe in. And I say, it's, I always tell people this, and I get people mad, because I heard this from a preacher many, 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 many years ago, when somebody said, well, I just don't believe that, I, I'd say, that's okay, that's okay, it's just not for you, but I'm taking your share. I'm, going to, I'm telling the Lord, Lord, he don't believe in that, he's not, he not going to use it, so you want to give me some of his, give me his, I need, I'll take some extra. And then they get real mad, well, you can't have that, that's mine. I said, well, no, no, you don't believe in it, you don't want it. I used to be real, really, a, you know, a punk. You know, hallelujah. Here's the second thing. One of the biggest ones that I was told when I was going, well, Jesus didn't speak in tongues, so I don't have to either. Well, the Holy Spirit wasn't given. Tongues and interpretation is the only gift that's for our dispensation. You don't find it in the Old Testament. You're not going to find it in the Old. Because the Holy Spirit, they, they weren't, it was only for our dispensation. It's a church age thing of empowering us because when we get to heaven and we go oh David man oh wow what was it like to kill Goliath oh oh Elijah oh Elijah you know what they're going to say man what was it like to have Jesus have the spirit of God living in you I mean we never got that we had to we only he would only come upon us and anoint us I mean Samson's gonna I couldn't do anything till the anointing came upon me to defeat the enemy and to do this you guys had that anointing living in you every single day 24 7 you had the spirit of God you guys were brand new create you had the life and the nature of God what was it like to walk on the earth supernaturally empowered come on see what I'm saying now I get a little excited I'm sorry I, I do because I believe in this so much and this one was told me all the time tongues is of the devil <laughs> and then what about first Corinthians 13 8 tongues have ceased when that which is perfect has come, tongues will cease. Tongues will cease. This will cease. And then this, this one here was one. There was a big one. Only the apostles could pray for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when the last apostle died, all everything died with them. The problem was is that they forgot about Ananias and Saul, who later became Paul. God told Ananias, there's a guy named Saul of Tarsus that's blinded. He needs to go lay hands on him that he'll receive his sight. And Ananias gets there and he says, hey, Saul, brother Saul, God sent me whom you've seen. He's told me to come and lay hands on you. You might receive your sight and that you might be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he got filled because that's the only time we see that he did because he says, I prayed and I was, I'm so glad I pray in tongues more than you all. Amen. So we see this. But let me give you, oh, no, it's done. Hallelujah. I was going to give you 10 reasons why it's so important. 
I was going to get to the good part, but it's seven o'clock. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll do that next. How about we do that next week? We'll give seven, ten reasons of why we should do this, what it does to help you. And it's, it's fantastic, and I'll give that to you, okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's, let's pray. Let's end this thing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we honor you. We love you. You alone are worthy. You're so good. Thank you for these wonderful folks that are here. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Father, we just love you. Thank you for those that are watching. You know, I get caught up and I forget about them at times. But Lord, thank you. Thank you for the word of God that goes forth in our lives. Father, we love that. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who is our teacher and who is our guide. He's going to teach us and guide us so that we can walk in the truths of the word of God. Lord, we honor you for that. We love you for it. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.